Welcome to Watkins Glen International Raceway. My name is Dean Case. I'm the communications officer for Mazda Motorsports. And once again, we're going to take you wire to wire. This time on a six hour ride with both cars, the 70 and the 07 here at this historic track. Looking behind me, you can see a little glimpse of the blue guardrails. That's an iconic feature of Watkins Glen International Raceway. This track has been around, first they raced in the streets of Watkins Glen in the 40s after World War II. They built a permanent track. This has been home to the uh, Formula U.S. Grand Prix in the 60s and 70s. It's the home of the infamous bog in the 1970s. If you want to have fun, look up on Google Watkins Glen Bog and Burning Bus. Uh, so it's got some amazing stories in the past, but now it's one of the most modern road courses in the country, but it's still traditional. It's very fast, big sweeping corners. It's really a driver's course. But before we get into the details of this weekend, let's do a look back at the Detroit Grand Prix. The Detroit Grand Prix dates back many, many years, and originally it was Formula One, switched to Indy cars, and they've added sports cars throughout the years. It's a great event. It's on, held on Belle Isle, uh, so it's actually in the Detroit River between Detroit and Canada. Uh, you know, it was a, relatively speaking for the Mazda team, an uneventful weekend. It's a short schedule. It was only a two-day program, a Friday-Saturday uh, program with a 100-minute race. So most of the time was just spent, you know, gathering data. Uh, cars ran flawlessly. Uh, we're gaining speed. Uh, and it was just, a, you know, one of those unremarkable races for us. The team, you know, did everything they needed to. Uh, the cars ran, you know, well. You know, good pit stops, and we picked up it was the first race where we had both cars finished without a single problem. So, uh, another milestone for us. Some of the little sh snapshots here. We're going to go in and do at some later race, kind of walk you through all the data they actually collect. But we can monitor, you know, the car, monitor the track, and most of it with the onboard camera. So, if something happens, they can know about it in the paddock, even sometimes before the driver and the track may learn about it. You'll get a sense on a few of these shots. The Detroit course, if it does have a complaint, is an extremely bumpy course. Very hard to get chassis set up in this track just because of the extreme differences in pavement and just uh, extreme bumps. It's uh, similar to Sebring in that manner. And of course, typically you see Tristan Nunes always, ch young women just always want to talk to Tristan Nunes at the races. And of course, our own Sylvain Tremblay heading out to the grid. This was pre-grid. Uh, those reflectors are no different than a car, uh, one you might have in your car if you live out in the desert. Anything to keep the heat load off the cockpit before the drivers are really getting in. Uh, quite a big windscreen there, and uh, heat issues uh, for the drivers can be a big problem. But for a 100-minute race, uh, it was a very hot day in Detroit, but a 100-minute race with two drivers, we had no problems whatsoever. It was nice to get a couple of shots where we had uh, the cars running in formation even a little bit during the race. You know, like I said, it was pretty much an uneventful race, which is what you like to have. Anytime you go to a street race and you can load up with two cars with zero damage as we get ready for the next race at Watkins Glen, that's a good weekend on a street course. Anytime you survive a street race with two intact cars, not a scratch on them, is a good day. Tell us about the day here in Detroit, John. You're exactly right. You see some of the cars coming in on the flatbeds after the race. I'm pleased that both of the Mazda prototypes came home unscathed. We talked in the opening about progress. Today was another step forward. Both cars finished a race for the first time, so that's a, another box checked. Really proud of the guys. Uh, anytime on a street circuit, you're dealing with a lot of other variables you wouldn't see on a normal road racing circuit. Uh, walls, yeah. uh, in particular, that are really close, but also a lot more traffic. And we continue to battle some cooling issues, which, which prevent us from really turning up the wick on the engines. But head back to Speed Source uh, to prepare for the six hours at Watkins Glen, which is a race that will allow us to showcase our fuel mileage advantage that we have with the Skyactive technology. Any special shout-outs for a special friend of ours? Without a doubt, uh, Yamanuchi-san, we wish you all the best. Uh, we're grateful for your leadership 
at Mazda over the years. And we'd like to make sure you understand that the same spirit with which you led Mazda is carried on in this team and every member as we continue to be one Mazda and support the Mazda brand globally. So thank you very much and best wishes. For the fans who may not know some of the names, we've got a tremendous international team involved. And, you know, we've got people in Florida, California, your office in Chicago, Japan. Uh, talk about the global effort here. It has been a global effort, and from the day that these engines left the production line, were boxed up and sent to speed source as road car engines, then put into a, a racing environment, engineers and, and the people in Hiroshima that, that established the design of the Skyactiv engine were the first step. They arrive at speed source. Engineers from Japan as well as from our R&D center in California play a role in the, in the development. And then once it gets into the race car, this amazing team of people at speed source have helped develop it to where we are today. Well, we're all looking forward to the six hours, the, the Salem six hours at the Glen, an amazing race there, and back to what is really the, the cornerstone of Mazda, which is endurance racing. Any, do you want to talk about other drivers coming in? For sure. Uh, it is an endurance race. It's a, it's a beautiful flowing circuit at Watkins Glen, so I think we'll have a, a great chance to showcase uh, the downforce and, and the chassis. But Ben Devlin will be back. He's one of our spirited drivers uh, over the years in the prototypes. And Tristan Vautier, one of our Mazda Road to Indy stars, will be back. So putting those guys back in the car with what Tom and Sylvain have done and what Tristan and Joel have done is a great addition, and hopefully we can have our best results of the season. Let's take a look at the Watkins Glen International Race Course. Watkins Glen is one of the classic road courses in North America. The original race in the 40s was in the streets before they built this permanent course. It's got, undergone some uh, variations over the years, uh, but it's an amazing, fast-flowing, 11-turn, 3.4-mile track. It's one of the longer tracks uh, that we race at. And it was home to some classic Formula One races in the 60s and 70s. This is the third of four endurance races. It's actually the shortest of the endurance races, just being six hours. But it's still an extreme test. We bring in the third driver and it does require crews bring additional equipment because this is definitely one unlike a 100 minute sprint race. If you do have a problem, you're going to work your butt off to get back out on the track. While we love doing these streaming videos, it's really, if you want to experience racing, you got to come to the track. Our drivers are extremely approachable. They spend a lot of time signing autographs and making themselves available. If you have questions, you can go through us on Facebook and we'll ask questions here, but ask in person, come to a track, check it out. Take a look at these scenes here from Detroit, the last race. Unlike some tracks where the autograph session is held in pit lane or in the paddock area, since we're at Belle Isle Park, they've got some just beautiful facilities. So it's, you really do feel like you're in a park. They've uh, had all the drivers from every team under one gazebo signing autographs for about an hour. It was a constant stream of traffic, so great uh, attendance at Detroit. Uh, you know, we encourage fans, if you're there, get an autograph. See if you, Grade the drivers on their penmanship. You know, Sylvain Tremblay puts a lot of thought into his. Some of the drivers just kind of scribble out, but uh, go and get an autograph, get a photo taken. Bring your tchotchke to have photograph with the drivers, whatever you want. I mean, here again, we repeat it over and over, but it's, we repeat it because it's true. This is a fan-friendly sport, and we'd love to have you come out and meet the drivers. For the longer endurance races, each of our regular two driver setups is complemented by a third driver. On the 70 car, we've had Ben Devlin. On the 07, Tristan Vaudier. We spent a little bit of time with our favorite Frenchman and Englishman uh, earlier this weekend. When we get to tracks like Watkins Glen with the six hour, it means we have to add another driver to the lineup for each of the cars. And we've got such a great talent pool to pick from, but for this year, it's two of our favorites, Ben Devlin and Tristan Vaudier. So we get a little bit of a European feel here. We've got, a, we're an all American team on the one hand with Speed Source and Mazda North American Operations, but we're obviously a Japanese company. We've got some Euro flair here, and we're gonna let these two guys go out a little bit later here and flog around the track. And I think you've got some grudge match up. What they're playing this kickball thing this week? Uh, what do they call it? World Cup or soccer? That's, sorry, I've got no idea what you're talking about there. Okay. Oh, it's because they're out of the competition already. What competition? They lost. World Cup, oh, yeah. we spoke. I don't think we were supposed to try in that anyway. Oh. It was to get others have a go. Uh, okay, so, good, good. Well, you guys have a lot of history with Mazda. Tristan uh, Vaudier is a two-time. He was on the Mazda Road to Indy 
Star Mazda champion, moved up, won the Indy Lights Championship, was Rookie of the Year in the Indy Cars last year. But he's kind of following, you might say, Joel Miller's path, switching over to sports cars. Ben Devlin's been running prototypes with Mazda's off and on for many years. Huge amount of experience running the Lola. So uh, tell us, but you haven't been to Watkins Glen in several years, and Tristan, you've never been here. Ben, tell us about Watkins Glen. Well, it's actually my first time back here for 13 years, believe it or not. So it was back in a, a Lola as well, an SR2 at the time, with a little V6 engine in it. So it's come on a long way now. We're back here, and uh, it's just bringing back, just doing two laps now, just bring back so many happy memories of how good this place really is. So Tristan, what's your take on uh, Watkins Glen? Well, it's really cool. I got to learn the track uh, in practice one, and I love uh, tracks with uh, fast corners and flowy corners. So, I guess this is the perfect track. I uh, really like it. I think it's it suits our uh, our Mazda prototype really well uh, in terms of chassis. And uh, yeah, it's been really cool so far. We now get to run on the best North American tracks. Before it was a bit of a playoff which one we were going to go through with the series, but now we get to pick the best tr um, tracks here in North America. So it's excellent. What do you think of looking forward to the season at uh, Road Atlanta? Yes, I think it's going to be really cool, same type of track. Uh, it's really cool for me, you know, to be uh, to be driving a Mazda car after all the all the support I got on the ladder, uh, on the open wheel world, you know, it's uh, it's really cool and it's uh, it's very it's a very big challenge, you know, and um, and uh, it's a great program and so I'm really looking forward to the, the rest of the year. In particular, you've always been on the single-seater side where you might share a little bit of data with a teammate, but you had your own car. Now you have to actually share a car. Is that psychologically, you had to make a shift on that? It's annoying because they had to make me like kind of a baby seat in the car because I'm shorter than my teammates. So I have to put a seat in the actual seat when I get in the car. So that's the only part that bothers yeah. me. But uh, no, it's good. We all get on well. Uh, yeah, the Brit is a little hard to work with. Um, but uh, no, it's good. Really happy to be part of it. All right. Thanks for adding the international flair. And we're going to have these guys show you a lap around Watkins Glen International Raceway. So I'm Ben Devlin, and this is a hot lap of Watkins Glen. I'm Tristan Vautier. Um, I'm the passenger of the car today because Ben Devlin is a, a Brit. And since they didn't qualify in the World Cup, they needed a consolation. So Why have you got to be like that? We've only just started. Why have you got to be like that? Hey? Okay, not bad so far. Are we good? Is this flat? I don't know. Yeah, no. Oh my god. Not bad for a Brit. How close do you want to go? Good, good. Open so, up your end, open up your end. What have you been doing? I've been watching you lose uh, the World Cup. Hey. That's what I've been doing, yeah. Hey. But you, you don't want to let that affect you. Focus on your driving this weekend. Move on, you know, you don't, yeah. I can see just looking at your drive, you're a bit affected, but. Have you just fought? No. Are you nervous? No, I didn't, no. Don't be nervous. No, I'm fine. If you were going a bit faster, maybe I would, but. <laughs> Still drinking tea, right? Love cup tea. Did you show us? I think you should uh, you get the stop tea, when... maybe get some espresso, it will pump you up a little if bit. If you get the kettle on, when we get home, I'll make yeah. it. Maybe that will help you a little bit. Yeah, How old are you? Are you and Tristan still doing the singing lessons? Or have you uh, stopped them? Yeah, yeah, we're a little bit, a little bit. But, uh, not bad. Ah, you, you break too much. You broke too hard. Oh, come on, baby. Come on, you on, were baby. too late on power. I'm on the power. You were what too late on the power. You moan all the this time. This is a Mazda. It should be much faster if you drove it proper. I'm trying. All right, this is the end of the lap. Keep your composure, don't think about the World Cup. <laughs> Good. In a little so early. So now we're in the heel of the, the boot, you know, the boot. Down to second gear. Second is I will, too low. I will take this corner low. in third, but uh, for Ben, you know, since he's still getting up to speed. All right. You happy? These are fast turns, just man up, okay? Just man up, are they yes. flat? Do I need to break? Uh, oh, you just broke it. I was scared a little, be honest. Good. It's the last turn, don't screw up. Make it count. <laughs> Say hello to the master. Hey, All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Sorry, uh, sorry it wasn't better, that. but sorry. next time, uh, hopefully, they do sorry. better in the World Cup and they could put me behind the wheel. Sorry. All right.
I'm sorry. When you're doing an endurance race where you have multiple driver changes, those actually have to be practiced. You could lose valuable seconds on a poorly executed driver exchange. We spent a little bit of time with Tom Long talking about how do they work on that procedure. In endurance racing, you have a co-driver and there's going to be at least one driver change. Longer races, we have a bunch of them. So the key thing is practicing that. So Tom Long, tell us about what do you do in driver change practice? Yeah, well, it's an integral piece to the pit stop because if it messes up, it can be the longest pole in the tent, which is going to actually hurt our total length of our pit stop. So in order to get it right, we've got to have the belts situated in such a way when the driver coming out of the car uh, is able to get out cleanly, but also that allows the new driver to get in and be able to fasten the belts. And we do have a driver changer helper. So that guy will end up putting all, clipping all the belts together, making sure they're safe, we're ready to go. And then the new driver will work on plugging in the radio and so forth. Well, it's pretty simple here from the standpoint of you and Sylvain are about the same size. So there's no seat insert or anything like that. Yeah, well, that's really convenient. You know, the same way with uh, Sylvain and myself, as long as with Joel and Tristan, uh, the, their body shape is allowing them to be able to use the same in seat insert, so we don't have to drag a seat insert into the car. Uh, when Ben drives with us, we actually have a little bit of an insert that he puts in to prop him up higher, so that makes it a little bit interesting because we got to slide that in as well, so that's an additional piece into the puzzle. Does that add a second or so, or have you got that down to where you can do all the driver changes about the same? Yeah, really our target is about 25 seconds. That's how long the tires take and the fuel delivery takes. So if we can get the driver change done in about 25 seconds, we're usually clear of getting all our, our diesel fuel and our uh, new tires. And you, I mean, you know, we filmed a little bit of the, here, the practice at Detroit. Do you do this at every single race, or is it how much back at the shop do you do this? Yeah, well, we practice usually during the race weekend at least once or twice. It's nice to do it on race day. But, of course, remember, we're doing that all through practice as well. So we're doing those driver changes. And sometimes it's in B to A or A to B driver. So it really just depends on the, uh, the lineup. All right. Thanks, Tom Long, for explaining the driver change process. Thank you. We often get questions about green racing. And if you look around, we're in Watkins Glen, a very green place to be. Green racing is not just a buzzword here. There's a lot of substance behind it. But we spent some time with Bob Larson, who was one of the original architects of the official green racing program, which was a partnership between some very influential organizations. Let's take a look at that talk with Bob. We're sitting here with Bob Larson. Bob is someone I've known for more years than we'd probably either like to recall, having served on some Society of Automotive Engineers SAE committees many years back. But interesting role, Bob is with the Department of Energy, and you'd say, what does the Department of Energy have to do with racing? So I'll just, Bob, what does the DOE have to do with racing? <laughs> well, Dean, we see the racetrack as a really fertile ground to um, drive innovation, develop the technologies that will actually flow into, um, you know, the next kind of generation of um, consumer cars, and certainly Mazda has been an incredible example of how that process works. So the um, Department of Energy has partnered with the Environmental Protection Agency and SAE International to uh, develop what we call the Green Challenge Program here with the IMSA, uh, the Tudor United Sports Car Challenge. So we actually um, do real-time scoring of all the cars um, on three important factors, how clean they are, how fast they are, and how efficient they are. This is an objective measurement that actually seeks to reward the teams and the manufacturers who can deliver the most speed for the least amount of energy with the least amount of carbon and the least amount of oil use. So, um, for example, one of the things we've been pioneering is the use of renewable fuels. Uh, the, the Mazda team is a great example. They're using a synthetic diesel um, that is has very, very little oil input. There's only a couple of percent uh, if in the whole life cycle of the fuel. Uh, and it also has a very big impact on reducing greenhouse gas emissions, carbon. Is there a website where our viewers can go look at if they want to know more about your green racing, the bigger initiative? We're a, we're a small part of it, and we're happy to be a part of it, but it is beyond just Mazda and our renewable diesel. Oh, yeah, actually, uh, every team that's part participating in the GT Le Mans class is competing in this um, uh, challenge, and we hope by next year to actually extend the challenge 
to the prototype class. So yes, they can go to greenracingcup.org, www, of course, greenracingcup.org. Uh, and there's a website that's done by uh, DOE and EPA that kind of explains this. Super. Thanks, Bob. Uh, I'll also post those links onto the Mazda Motorsport Facebook page. So if you want more information on the dynamic fuels that we're running at Mazda or the Green Racing Initiative, go to our Facebook page for the links. With every race, our program advances. So to get the latest down low on what's changed with the Mazda Skyactor prototype, we spent some time with Sylvain Tremblay in the Speed Source paddock. Stay here with Sylvain Tremblay from Speed Source. The Mazda prototype has been going a con undergoing a constant evolution since the first race, and actually pre-season. I don't think you've come here any two races or even any two test sessions where you didn't change something. And tell us, we've had some questions about what's new for this race, and a lot of it's on the cooling package. Could you walk us through what you've changed in terms of extracting heat from this engine? Sure, Dean. So obviously, you know, our, our Mazda prototype makes a decent amount of power, three times what the production car does, and also a whole bunch of heat. So to manage that, you know, we're only limited with packaging. We can only fit in a radiator that's this size. You know, intercoolers can't be any bigger. So for us, it's about airflow management, how the air basically flows through the car. So today, really, we're going to talk about extractors, not going to the dentist extractors, but actual vents that extract the air. If you look on our side pod here on our Mazda prototype, these gills or these vents just reduce the high pressure area behind the radiator to extract air to help improve airflow. Another little thing that we've done is if you look on this other extractor, which is a side one, we have this gurney. So this lip trips the air and creates pressure behind it to extract the air through the core. So really, since we can't physically put on bigger radiators in the car, it's about how do we make these more efficient. It's about the airflow. Not only how much air you can get in, but how much air you can get out. And really, that's been the big challenge. So we have one car that's running in one configuration, another car that's running in another configuration. So we're continuously learning. And you know the, the basic shape of the car, we can't change. But we can change the amount of air that's extracted with these extractor vents on the side pod of our Mazda prototype. I spent a little bit of time with Liam Dwyer. If you don't recognize that name, you didn't obviously see the race results from Lime Rock Park. In the Continental Race at Lime Rock on Memorial Day weekend, U.S. Marine Staff Sergeant Liam Dwyer, in only his second ever professional race, teamed up with Tom Long in Freedom Autosport for an amazing win in their MX-5. Uh, it's just unbelievable what happened on Memorial Day weekend. Liam is racing with a prosthetic leg and just a fascinating individual. And let's uh, take a look at our discussion with Liam earlier today. Standing here with Liam Dwyer. Liam has been this amazing story. Hopefully you followed along. He's done two professional races. He's done a lot of club racing, done some vintage racing, but all of two professional races. Uh, had 50% of the times he's entered a race, he's won. His, he, had, he started out Mazda Raceway in May, had a little bit of a bad, bad accident there but then went on to this storybook finish at Lime Rock. So, Liam, tell us about the last month and a half here. Uh, it's been quite uh, topsy-turvy, if you want to call it that, all over the place. Interviews, phone calls, TV interviews, radio interviews, interviews for Mazda, for IMSA. Got a visit to the White House a few days ago. Uh, was at the Dover race, uh, the NASCAR Dover race. Was in victory lane with Jimmy Johnson shortly thereafter. Um, it's been quite the whirlwind uh, since the team won at Lime Rock uh, Memorial Day weekend uh, in the Mazda MX-5, and it's been quite awesome. To, to say that my life has been turned upside down in a good way um, is putting it lightly. It's been quite awesome. I'm hoping we can continue this momentum here at Watkins Glen with the Freedom Autosports Mazda MX-5s. Well, let's talk about a little bit, you know, how many of your Marine buddies even knew what you were doing before that win? Uh, not too many. A, a few of them knew that I was involved in cars, I was racing cars, but they hear racing, they're thinking mainly drag racing or street racing. And uh, after, we, after we got the win at Lime Rock on Memorial Day weekend, and then it made the ESPN Sports Center top, 20, uh, top 10, actually, uh, my phone kind of exploded at that, that point, and my command called me up, and they're like, we didn't realize your racing was going on like this. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know, it's, it's big time. That's what I tried explaining to you guys early on. And uh, I think it gave really good exposure, not just to me, not just to Mazda, but also good exposure to the Marine Corps and to the Wounded Warriors about what we're capable of. And uh, we've taken this, um, kind of like put it in a tackle hold with uh, Mazda, and we brought this to the Marine Corps. And we're hopefully going to get some more out of this with the Marine Corps, getting some other Marines or Wounded Warriors involved in racing or involved in the automotive industry somehow. 
the way it worked before is wounded warriors and uh, Marines were only able to get jobs with government agencies, I should say interns, while they were in the Marine Corps, internships. And what we're trying to do now, because a bill was passed back in March that allows civilian companies, non-government agencies, to come onto bases and to offer job services to military personnel. Uh, Moz is going to be the first one, it looks like, saw a civilian personnel, civilian employer to come on base and to offer jobs to wounded warriors and to Marines as well. So John Doonan uh, came up to Bethesda Naval Hospital, Walter Reed, a few weeks ago, met with myself. Um, I might come into there, Lieutenant Colonel Anthes and our civilian uh, employer for us, who goes out and looks for jobs for us in the civilian market. We had a good meeting with them, and it looks like we're gonna get some jobs put in place there for active duty personnel, wounded, wounded, ill, or injured, or even just regular active duty to apply to and hopefully work for MASA shortly thereafter. Well, that's great, because I mean, one of the obvious things that I've learned, and I think a lot of us who haven't necessarily worked you know, so closely with the Marines or Army or Navy or whatever, is from the standpoint of the teamwork, I mean, Ultimately, that's your success, and it translates directly to so many other applications, jobs, and motorsports. Oh, absolutely. You know, you take, for instance, the, the win that everybody has been talking about that we had at Lime Rock, and a lot of accolades get given to me. You know, you won that race, and it, it wasn't me that won that race. It was, it was a truly a team effort. As you mentioned earlier, you know, I wrecked the car at Mazda Raceway. The car was wrecked beyond repair. The guys at Long Road Racing Freedom Autosports built a brand new car. It had never seen a track until it showed up at Lime Rock. And we started dead last that race. We, I moved the car from my stint of driving. Tom got in the car, and Tom drove phenomenally, moving the car up. Tom was very fast. But then we, ha we had a great pit stop getting Tom in the car, and then we made a, uh, another pit stop shortly thereafter to get topped off with fuel early on. And the caution flags fell our way. We had good strategy going on with our team, with our spotter and uh, strategist Chris Long. So it wasn't just one person just bringing the car to, to victory. It was honestly, truly a team effort, which is really the way it plays in the military. The reason why we're able to be so successful in the missions that we do in the military is because it's based on a team effort. It's not one person being a superhero. It's everybody working in conjunction together, which is what we had at Limerick a few weeks ago. VIR will be my next race. That is August 23rd. Uh, that'll be my next race here in the Freedom Autosports Mazda MX-5. We're hoping that this could parlay into something bigger in the future, maybe for next season. But that'll be the next time I'm in the car. It's Tom's home track. It's what I consider my new home track, being that it's about four hours from where I'm at at Walter Reed there. So we're hoping for a good showing there. The Mazda MX-5s have been very strong there in the past. We're hoping for another top five finish there. For anyone who doesn't know, VIR is Virginia International Raceway. Beautiful, beautiful racetrack. Uh, so uh, invite, you want to invite everybody active or retired from all forces? The What we're trying to do right now is to get all active duty personnel and retired veterans of that matter, wounded warriors, to come out to the race to see what we're doing here, to see a active duty service member, wounded warrior, uh, racing in, in a professional series uh, in the car here. And it's, he, I'm not just a part of the team, I'm, you know, if you want to call it one of the stars of the team where I'm getting all the accolades because I'm driving. So we're trying to get some wounded warriors and some active duty personnel down there to see what we got going on. Give them some a little bit of VIP treatment. Get there, get in there, see the cars. Get them, get them in there, sitting in the cars, yeah. and hopefully get them treated well down there and get them to uh, enjoy the experience down there at Virginia International Raceway. Thank you for joining us for the pre-race show. We're about ready to go green here at Watkins Glen International. But mark your calendars for the next race. Go to IMSA.com. You can download the entire schedule for the Tudor United Sports Car Championship, and look for the Mazda channel on YouTube for other updates in between races, feature content. But let's get ready to go racing here at Watkins Glen.
right to the bus stop. I can do it if you don't want to do it, but uh, I'll let you have it. Chris, are you calling the 70? Copy that, left or right, for uh, 07. Yeah, I haven't seen for sure yet. It's time to stay close to the hole. Uh, I can call the green for both. Uh, Marcus wanted to call it for the 70, so I can call it for the 07. I can talk to both channels, or you can call it. You let me know. If you can see it, I'd like you to call it, if you're not doing the 70. Or I will call it the your 70. Zach, I have him at 19, so that should be inside, right? Can you confirm me? I have to line up on the right side of the green. I mean, I can follow the guys and figure it out, but I'd like to know not at the last minute, please. Right side. Right side. So he will be right side. All right, so I'm going to try to work those tires. I'm still a couple of PSI away. Let's get those brakes up, too. I'm going to start checking up here as you approach the bus stop back straight. Marcus, I'll call you, uh, I'll call you at like turn 8, I'll tell you 11, pace cars off, and then I'll hand the radio to you. Driver in the same gate, starting outside, David Chang, ahead of you, Duncan Andy, left ahead of you, Mike Headland, behind you, Andy Prio, Ian Magnuson, Dirk Muller. Alright guys, let's start to pack up and pair up. It'll be a double file start. Stay in line until we get to the line. I will call the green. Yeah, we lost some, but I don't want to have it in just a minute here.
Okay, so they can come to the green, going green this time. Stand by, I will call green. Ten seconds. Pace car is off. Two, one. Green, green, green. All clear. All clear by two. All clear behind. Clear behind. Two GT side by side. Clear by one. All clear. Clear three back. Clear behind something, clear behind. Clear by three, no pressure, all clear. All clear, clear by three. Good lap, good lap. All of the PCs in front of you are on the same time. Copy, EC4. Yeah, copy that. It's getting better after you pulled out of traffic. Copy that. I'll let you know on the pace from behind. One GPL out back. Clear by 20 after him. Dead clean air. 30 out back. That's a 50 flat for you to a 51 flat from behind. By 30, by 30. It's up.
clear by 30 to a large pack. Cars in front of you are just a couple tenths quicker. Leader 40.3, you 47. Cars on the next car back is Tagliani, the PC car doing 45 to. Marcus, this last lap is probably the best arrow we're going to get all day. Clear by three seconds, large pack. Relatively well balanced with this uh, set of tires. It did take some push back. Good. Copy that, something. Copy that. Big gap behind, big gap behind. Why don't we try running driver mode 5? Driver mode 5 on the shift light. You're on five now, I confirm you're on five. Warn the other guys. It pushed a little bit. I find the corner just about to find your right spot on the hill. Copy.
Let's try shifting at the second blue light. Second blue. Yeah, copy that, so then we see that. Let's try going on the first blue, the short shift. Everything looking good by ourselves here. Yeah, the car's looking great, Chris. Uh, 206, 210, 105. The Corvette behind is catching you, the others are not. Three seconds, Corvette. Fit this time, please. Fit this time. Ten of eleven. And just a half second quicker. Okay, so they straight down. Nobody in the lane right now. Straight down. We're gonna kill the engine with the button. Now we're gonna pull the engine cover off.
Five three Corvette, one prototype, one E, group of two. Four, Delta one, clear by four seconds. Delta wing, one on me, clear after. Clear by three. Two. By one. right there behind us. Thank you. 
Like I could not turn left in the ashes. I was still flat in the car world. Very strange. And the wheel will go more and more to the right. Yeah, we're looking at that. I want taking out some understeer with the right height. We're gonna go another step. Copy. Okay, Cameron, go ahead and come back over.
Howdy, listen to tire. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, go right here, look right, look right. We're gonna go through the hole in the wall, straight back to the paddock. Bob is gonna meet you there. We're gonna retow the front end. Looking right. Keep coming, keep coming, right there. There you go. Okay, keep coming right. Yeah, you're good, you're good. Okay, follow the officials right here. Yep. Yep, there you go, you're good, you're good. Slow down, you don't have to rush him. All right, looking left. We're two laps down, we don't have to rush, you're, you're good, there you go. All right, Bob should already be back there, hopefully, there you go. All right, I'm coming off. When we get to tracks like Watkins Glen with the six hour, it means we have to add another driver to the lineup for each of the cars. And we've got such a great talent pool to pick from, but for this year, it's two of our favorites, Ben Devlin and Tristan Vaudier. So we get a little bit of a European feel here. We've got, a, we're an all-American team on the one hand with Speed Source and Mazda North American Operations, but we're obviously a Japanese company. We've got some Euro flair here, and we're gonna let these two guys go out a little bit later here and flog around the track. Yeah, and I think you've got some grudge match. Was there playing this North kickball thing this week? Uh, what do they call it, World Cup or soccer? Sorry, I've got no idea what you're talking about there. Okay. No, it's because they're out of the competition already. Welcome they back to the World Cup. Oh, well, we yeah. spoke, I don't think we were supposed to try in that anyway. Oh. It was to get others have a go. So, okay, good. Well, you guys have a lot of history with Mazda. Tristan uh, Vaudier is a two-time. He was on the Mazda Road to Indy. Star Mazda champion, moved up, won the Indy Life Championship, was Rookie of the Year in the Indy Cars last year. But he's kind of following, you might say, Joel Miller's path, switching over to sports cars. Ben Devlin's been running prototypes with Mazda's off and on for many years. Huge amount of experience running the Lola. So uh, tell us, but you haven't been to Watkins Glen in several years, and Tristan, you've never been here. Ben, tell us about Watkins Glen. Well, it's actually my first time back here for 13 years, believe it or not. So it was back in a, a Lola as well, an SR2 at the time, with a little V6 engine in it. So it's come on a long way now. We're back here, and uh, it's just bringing back, just doing two laps now, just bringing back so many happy memories of how good this place really is. So Tristan, what's your take on uh, Watkins Glen? Well, it's really cool. I got to learn the track uh, in practice one, and I love uh, tracks with the uh, fast corners and flowy corners. So, I guess this is the perfect track. I uh, really like it. I think it's it suits our uh, our Mazda prototype really well uh, in terms of chassis. And uh, yeah, it's been really cool so far. We now get to run on the best North American tracks. Before it was a bit of a playoff which one we were going to go through with the series, but now we get to pick the best tr um, tracks here in North America. So it's excellent. What do you think of looking forward to the season at uh, Row Atlanta? Yes, I think it's going to be really cool, same type of track. Uh, it's really cool for me, you know, to be, uh, to be driving a Mazda car after all the, all the support I got on the ladder, uh, on the open wheel world, you know, it's, uh, it's really cool and it's, uh, it's, very, it's a very big challenge, you know, and, um, and uh, it's a great program and so I'm really looking forward to the, the rest of the year. In particular, you've always been on the single-seater side where you might share a little bit of data with a teammate, but you had your own car. Now you have to actually share a car. Is that psychologically, have you had to make a shift on that? It's annoying because that to make me like kind of a baby seat in the car because I'm shorter than my teammates. So I have to put a seat in the actual seat when I get in the car. So that's the only part that bothers me. But uh, no, it's good. We all get on well. Uh, yeah, the Brit is a little hard to work with. Um, but uh, no, it's good. Really happy to be part of it. 
All right, thanks for adding the international flair, and we're gonna have these guys show you a lap around Watkins Glen International Raceway. So, I'm Ben Devlin, and this is a hot lap of Watkins Glen. I'm Tristan Vautier. Um, I'm the passenger of the car today because Ben Devlin is a, a Brit, and since they didn't qualify in the World Cup, they needed a consolation. So Why have you got to be like that? We've only just started. Why have you got to be like that? Hey? Okay, not bad so far. Are we good? Is this flat? I don't know. Yeah, no. Oh my god! Not bad for a Brit. How close do you want to go? Good, good. Up so, and up your end, up and up your end. What have you been doing? I've been watching you lose uh, the World Cup. Hey. That's what I've been doing, yeah. But you, you don't want to let that affect you. Focus on your driving this weekend, move on, you know, you don't, yeah. I can see just looking at your drive, you're a bit affected, but. Have you just fought? No. Are you nervous? Uh, no, I didn't, no. Don't be nervous. No, I'm fine. If you were going a bit faster, maybe I would, but. <laughs> Still drinking tea, right? Love cup tea. Did you show us? Thank you, should, uh, you get the kettle on tea, when maybe get some espresso. It will pump you up a little. If bit. you get the kettle on when we get home, I'll make yeah. it. Yeah, maybe that will help you a little bit. Yeah, How old are you? Are you and Tristan still doing the singing lessons? Or have you uh, stopped them? Yeah, yeah, we're a little bit, a little bit. But, uh, not bad. Ah, you, you break too much. You break too hard. Oh, come on, baby. Come on, you were baby. too late on power. I'm on the power. You were too late on the power. You moan all the this time. This is a Mazda. It should be much faster if you turn it proper. I'm trying. All right. It's the end of the lap. Keep your composure. Don't think about the World Cup. <laughs> Good. So now we're in the heat of the, the boots. You know? Down to second gear. I will, I will take this corner in third, but uh, for Ben, you know, since he's still getting up to speed. And you happy? These are faster, this man up, okay? Just man up, are they yes. flat? Do I need to break? Oh, you just broke. I was scared a little, be honest. The last turn, don't screw up. Make it count. <laughs> Say hello to the last one. Alright. Thanks for watching guys, sorry uh, it sorry wasn't better, that. but sorry. next time uh, hopefully they do sorry. better in the World Cup and they could put me behind the wheel. So.
off. If they come back out, can you let me know on the O7 crew? Copy, Chris, copy.
Back up the corner up here, Tristan. Back up the bus stop. That helps a lot. Lift off and coast into the bus stop. Don't run so long in six gear.
Back on, all good. Good job, Tristan, 45-9.
leaders in on the back stretch. Is the 90 car, the first car behind the uh, base car? Yes, 90. It sure is all that water. Uh, Everybody's uh, together. Copy, copy, Chris. Leader stays out. Quick yellow, already cleaned up. So we're just going to stay out and ride around. Uh, everybody stayed out. No takers, so we don't get anything from it. 31 and the 1. Two cars. 31, 1. Copy, Chris.
Marco, can you come with me on the box, please? Copy, Tristan, copy. So it's still going to be, uh, going to be a four lap process instead of a three lap. Copy. Hi, right, Tristan, can you hear me? Copy. Radio check, Tristan, radio check. Copy that, Mighty Sir. Copy that, Mighty Sir. Okay, cool. Uh, so, it's Valier's Gatorade. It's in your drink bottle. We're going to change it at the next stop when you stay into water. All right, copy. Right now I have you on TC8, is that correct? So Chris and Daniel, this is going to be a friend trade only deal for whatever reason now on the radio. I don't know if it's the same tap on the plug or the antenna on the plug itself.
five, probably take one to go this time. They still got to go pick up a car, so it's maybe going to be two more laps. Michael Conn, can you come to the box, please? There's going to be another two, three laps. There's a car stuck in a bus stop. White weather check for sure. Radio check, got me. Radio check, box, box the car. There's 22 weather check from the bus stop. Box the car, radio check, you still have me? Yeah, copy that, I got you. I do turn four, bus stop. Top of the hill. Chris, I need you to relay. They're doing the lap down way by. We do not get it. We stay put. Stay left. Stay put. Coming to you, Chris. Seven now. Going to the boot. Right in there. Stay left. Stay put. Stay left. Stay put. Copy that, Daniel. Yep. That's 
tires are on the way, Bob. Alright Tristan, remember when we get going here, we're going to want to warm it up a little bit. Water's 141 right now. Should be the last car. Should be done. Zach, it'll probably be this time, won't it? Yeah, great. Green this time. Good. This time, this time, lights out. Call Chris Green this time. Race car is in turn nine. Single file start. Racing with a flag drop. This car is turn ten. Up seven. Three seconds.
should have already gone if they didn't go. So you're probably back far enough where pass around didn't affect them. your question, there's probably going to be no cars. There were just the first few in line. They were far back enough where they won't affect us. Pass round is complete, so pass round is over. So uh, after this lap of yellow that we just started, that should pick us up two more green flag laps. We should stop and we get one clear. Zach is the PC leader, uh, PTL leader 56. Oh, uh, three.
Coming to one to go. One to go. So the two yellow Corvettes, their first and second, GTL, the uh, BMW, quite anxious right behind you, to the right of you, is in third place with John Edwards. Copy that. Keep in mind, Tristan, that BMW is going to be good at the top of the S's where you start comping on turbo speed. It's not really comping much, but that's the area. Okay, stop it. That'll keep that fine. So we're 30 minutes into your first stint, Tristan. One and a half laps of green or what? Lights out, going green. This time by. Lights out. This time. Copy. Temps look good. Pressures, the rear pressure's a little low. Every car looks good. Pace car is turned ten and a half. Twenty seconds. Ten seconds. Pace car is off. Three, two, one. Green, 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 green. Clear by three. Clear, clear, clear. Clear by five. No pressure. Turn one is clear. You are all clear. Go clear by two to the 56. Go clear by three to the BMW. Holy steady.
by two on GTL, they're by two. by three, PC eight. I can't see you, I cannot see you. Clear, 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 clear. Clear by five on the O1. All clear, beautiful. All clear, beautiful. No contact, Tristan. Negative, no contact, no contact. Proper job, keep going. Right side, clear, 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 clear. Yeah, that's right, Chris. I don't know how we got through that. Taking a penalty, fifth left. Clear by two on the 56. Penalty for the 56. You are good. Delta wing off, coming in to 11, 12 now. Delta wing is on pit lane, is on pit lane. At the apex. At the apex. Outside, outside, hold your line. Clear, 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 clear. Copy, copy, clean air, back up the bus stop. Clear. Clear by half. On the 94. Clear by 2.1. Yeah, I got you, Shadow.
clear by one. Well done. 
Copy, copy, blue light. There's a possible electrical issue, that's what's going on with the dash and also that alarm. Continue to let me know on the alarm, we're going to fix it at the next stop.
Window clear by 10 on the 31. Wheeling. Silver and red, Audi looks off pace. Coming. Coming. Copy, we're gonna look into it. We may come in early, we'll let you know. Copy that. Next car is in the stripe now. Marco does the drink bottle, then we'll go in and do the electrical. 
Probably full course here, Copy, I see it's going on the front train.
Mike, don't worry about it from there. We got a jump battery? Do you have a jump battery for this car? Nothing over there, that all went back. Marco's going to get it. Push start it, but you In endurance racing, have you have a co-driver, no and there's going to be at least one driver change. Longer races, we have a bunch of them. So the key thing is practicing that. So Tom Long, tell us about what do you do in driver change practice? Yeah, well, it's an integral piece to the pit stop, because if it messes up, 
it can be the longest pole in the tent, which is going to actually hurt our total length of our pit stop. So in order to get it right, we've got to have the belts situated in such a way when the driver coming out of the car uh, is able to get out cleanly, but also that allows the new driver to get in and be able to fasten the belts. And we do have a driver changer helper. So that guy will end up putting all, clipping all the belts together, making sure they're safe, we're ready to go. And then the new driver will work on plugging in the radio and so forth. Well, it's pretty simple here from the standpoint of you and Sylvain are about the same size. So there's no seat insert or anything like that. Yeah, well, that's really convenient. You know, the same way with uh, Sylvain and myself, as long as with Joel and Tristan, uh, the, their body shape is allowing them to be able to use the same seat insert so we don't have to drag a seat insert into the car. Uh, when Ben drives with us, we actually have a little bit of an insert that he puts in to prop him up higher, so that makes it a little bit interesting because we got to slide that in as well, so that's an additional piece into the puzzle. Does that add a second or so, or have you got that down where you can do all the driver changes about the same? Yeah, really our target is about 25 seconds. That's how long the tires take and the fuel delivery takes. So if we can get the driver change done in about 25 seconds, we're usually clear of getting all our uh, diesel fuel and our uh, new tires. I know, you know, we filmed a little bit of a year the practice at Detroit. Do you do this at every single race or is it how much back at the shop do you do this? Yeah, well, we practice usually during the race weekend at least once or twice. It's nice to do it on race day. But, of course, remember, we're doing that all through practice as well. So we're doing those driver changes. And sometimes it's in B to A or A to B driver. So it really just depends on the, uh, the lineup. All right. Thanks, Tom Long, for explaining the driver change process. Thank you.
guys on the fuel heads up. Go pull that hose. Fired up.
All clear up back. All clear out of here.
backing up the bus stop offset.
still three seconds.
Mob in the 46 blue. Heads up. 46 at the mob.
clear. Three seconds, all clear. I temporarily have no cruise channel. I think it's the headset on the cruise side of my headset. All clear. Yeah, you were talking to both channels before. All clear.
prototype. One second and three seconds. It's going to be group of four prototypes.
time, just time. Visor down, suit zipped up, gloves on, check it in. Now, the 27 will be in their box, possibly the 27 is gone, it'll be clear in. Ground strap. PSM. No way. Okay, got your five way, see you bending in. Three, two, one, break. Right on the mark, nice. Make sure that door is good. Inside, drop it. Wait, wait. Okay, go, go, go. Reset fuel. Reset fuel. TC6, new tires. Now, reset fuel. Six old tires. We got two cars in the middle of one here. They'll be uh, coming up your shoulder. If you stay tight, stay tight. Last car is black. Aston the mark. Three back. Two back. Part of time coming. Prototype bumper and black. Did not copy. 58 minutes to go. 58. Oh, clear by your command on the 55. Easy help.
Back over. Nothing else. 
back, car still on the wall, still green. Can we start saving yet?
Stay right, your turn 11 here. Stay right. Take a deep breath, Joel. With this, we should be good on fuel, but we're going to play the numbers there. Of course, we're going to be incredibly conservative. We'll see how long this takes. All we need to do at this point is bring it home. Copy. Sounds good. Stay left, stay put. Engine map one, save fuel. Yeah. 
is the coast. Understood, not yet. All right, that should be it. Should be all clear. Heads up here in 11, they got a super truck in the middle of the track. You're pretty much gonna be on pit lane. Alright, so the uh, 42 is the leader, the 9 is a lap down, and then the, uh, the 2 car doesn't count. 60, the 90 is P2, out back. So of course the 9 is going to be until the 5 gets there. Joe, we are not good on fuel. We will need to stop even with the yellow. This will be a four second time stop. Clutch in.
Hey guys, I'm gonna count four to zero and I will call out. Then when I call out, Bob will send the car. FYI, uh, four auto sports, ESM group are both sitting. You're only up against two cars, you can pop four auto sports, two cars. Copy, turn 12, call pit in. Pass the pace car, now. Copy, got you, pit in. The lights are red, I will not take it. Correct. Clear in. Got you five away, looking in. Three, two, one, brakes. Slants up, fuels in. One, two, three, four, out. Good to go. Find the red light if it's there. Red lights are there, waiting. Pull all the way left, pull all the way left. And wait. Let me know when the last cars are getting close so I can get it in gear. Getting close. Three, two, one. Should be. Green, green, green. Green, green, green. Lights out on the pace car going green. This time you have the core and the two behind you. This time by, Joel. Green this time by. For the uh, pace card is turn five. Turn five. Joel, that's a battle for the lead behind you. A lap for the guy ahead of you, a lap for the guy behind you with the battle behind you, so feel free to continue staying. Two on the 
two. Looking inside. Looking. Inhale. Clear, 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 clear. On the two. With the front. Right side. BMW is falling. Black. Black. BMW. After black. Make sure we leave a lamp and a gun. Seven minutes, I don't want to pull everything.
that kind of a look at this thing. Lights out, going green, this time, this time, going green, this time. Hey, Park, you do it, two minutes left. Joe, this is going to be an absolute mess. We're going green right here at, with just a few seconds left. This is going to be green checker. Stay way back. Don't do one lap, Zach. Just stay way back and out of the way. It's been a huge mess. It's got a big battle for the lead up front. Yeah, build the gap, Joel. Build the gap. Make sure you get the brakes happy. All right, pace car is 10 seconds here. Pace car is off. Three, two, green, 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 green. Stay relaxed. Leave a gap. Car out back, coming to the white and green, left, left, car one is clear. Clear by two seconds on the nine car. It's gonna be a group of four P cars if you need it. Group of four together if you want it. Head back.
Clear by two, TC. One TC, one TC. All clear, all clear. Right five. Car stops at the pit entry. Clear. Be right side. Right side. Still there, still inside. Safety car speed, please. Safety car speed. Okay, Joe. Uh, T33 overall, 19th class. Let's just drive it straight back to the truck. When we get to tracks like walking zone. Well.